Hi everyone, this is Mrs. G.A. Um, in this video, we're going to talk about algebraic expressions, and it will mainly focus on a factoring review. Um, before we get to the factoring review, I want to go over a few pieces of vocabulary that are important to know. Uh, first, a monomial is any single term expression. A polynomial is a more broad term. It's pretty much any expression with more than one term. Um, now, there are two specific types of polynomials that have uh, specific names. They are binomial, which is a two-term expression, and trinomial, which is a three-term expression. Anything more than that, we just call polynomial. Um, and then the last vocab word I really want you to start using is degree, which is the largest exponent of any single term or the sum of the exponents from any single term. Um, so these are all words that might pop up throughout this lesson. Okay, so now we're going to do a really quick um, factoring review. So factoring is going to be something that you guys will be using all year. So it's really important that we refresh these skills. Um, so there's a few different methods I want to talk about. Uh, the first method is probably the most important one because this is the thing that you should check for with any expression, and it's for a greatest common factor, which I'll call the GCF. So essentially what you're going to do is you're going to look at all of your terms and see um, the greatest factor that they all have in common. So in this first example, I can see that my GCF, well, we can start with the numbers. We have 12, 8, and 10. So my GCF is going to be 2 there. And then for my x terms, you're pretty much going to be picking the smallest degree for each variable, so it will work for all three. So if I have x cubed, x squared, and x, my GCF is x. And if I have x to the fifth, x to the fourth, and or sorry, y to the fifth, y to the fourth, and y cubed, it will be y cubed. So you want to pull out as much as you possibly can, but anything larger than y cubed, it wouldn't work for these um, larger degree terms. So my GCF is 2xy cubed. So I'm going to go in and I'm going to essentially divide each term by my GCF. So when you divide, it doesn't just disappear. We're essentially dividing it out and placing it out front. So please don't forget to write your GCF. It should be the very first thing you write. And then uh, you just do your division and write what's remaining. So here we'd have 6x x squared y squared minus 4xy plus 5. And this is our greatest, uh, is as much as you can factor. You should always double check what's remaining to see if there's another way you can, in fact, uh, can factor, but in this case there's not, so you're all done. Okay, the next method we're going to talk about is factoring trinomials, where our a value, which is the coefficient of x squared, equals 1. Um, so this one you can probably factor just by looking at it um, and maybe just doing it in your head. So we know this would be um, x minus 5 times x plus 3. But just in case you need a little refresher on how um, you can go about figuring that out, uh, I like to use what's called the magic x method. So you put a magic x, whatever your constant is, constant is the non-variable term, you put on the top. The coefficient of x goes on the bottom, so negative 2. And you ask yourself, what two numbers multiply to make negative 15 and add to make negative 2? So of course that would be negative 5 and positive 3 which are the two numbers inside your factor. So if you need to, you can do this, but I think that um, with practice, you should be able to do a problem like this in your head. Uh, the next method is factoring a trinomial where your a value is greater than one. So if your a value is greater than one, you can't just use magic x. Now, of course, for this, maybe um, these are other problems where you can do it in your head using logic. Uh, for example, you know that it has to be 3x here and x here to achieve x squared. And then maybe you're looking at it and you say, how do I make 4? Oh, maybe 4 and 1, and then try it out to see if it works. So if 3x squared plus 7x plus 4. Now, if you need a little help um, uh, doing this, um, I have two different methods that I like to teach. So let's start with the bottom up method. So for the bottom up method, what you do is you take the 
A value and you temporarily multiply it to your C value. This you can factor using um, magic X or just in your head. So X plus four times X plus three. But then here's the thing you need to remember since we temporarily multiplied by three at the beginning, we divide by three at the end. Now, anything that can simplify, like 3 over 3, you should. That becomes 1. Anything you can't, you bring it from the bottom up, which is why we call it the bottom-up method. So 3x plus 4. So we get the same result. It you know takes a little longer, and you do need to remember the steps, but it's just an algorithm that will work every time. So maybe you've used that method in the past. Um, another method that I like to teach is called reverse box. Um, so again, you'll get the same answer, but... Here's how it works. Um, we start with a magic X triangle, or a magic X. Uh, our top number, instead of just being four, is going to be this three times four, which is 12. Our bottom number is the coefficient here, so seven. And we fill out our magic X, so we get four and three. Same as what we just talked about, multiplying and adding. Um, so these numbers, we're actually going to put inside our box. So for 4, we're going to put it here with an x, a 3x here. Um, our other two blank spots come from our first and last term. And then we kind of work our way um, backwards. So we place um, two terms here and two terms here that would multiply to make the numbers inside your box. So uh, for these two terms, well, we know the only way to make x squared is with x and x. And we know the only way to make 3 is 3 times 1. You just need to decide where to put it. So if I put the 3 here and I say, does 3 go into 4? No. Does 3 go into 3? Yes. So we have 3x here and 1x here, essentially. Then I say, how many times does 3x go into 3x? One time. How many times does 1x go into 4x? four times and we end up with the same two factors which of course um, you can double check really quickly by multiplying it out. Um, again you can use any method you want um, hopefully as you practice more you can do it just using logic but um, if you need to use bottom-up method reverse box or another method you've learned that's totally fine. Okay, next method um, is actually a formula for specific, specific types of binomials. It's called difference of two squares. I call it dots. Maybe you've heard it called difference of two perfect squares. Um, so the formula uh, only works if you actually have a difference, meaning subtraction, of two terms that are both perfect squares. And if you have um, difference of two squares, the formula is a plus b times a minus b. So notice you're essentially taking the square root of each term to find a and b. Um, so let's look at this example. It's a dead giveaway when it's two terms and you see subtraction. Then just check to make sure everything is a perfect square, which everything is. So I like to write out my a and b values. So the square root of 9 is 3. Square root of x to the fourth is x squared. And my b value, um, square root of 100 is 10, and the square root of y squared is y. And then you just plug it into your formula. 3x squared plus 10y, 3x squared minus 10y, which is a plus b times a minus b. Um, so again, you can quickly check it by multiplying it out and making sure that it actually results in this binomial. Okay, um, the next method is uh, two more formulas that you definitely need to know, be able to recognize those type of problems. Um, this is for the sum and difference of cubes. I do want to point out that there is both a sum and difference. Um, for perfect squares, there is no such thing as a sum of two squares, so this only works for cubes. So same idea, if you have a sum or difference of two perfect cubes, all you need to do is find your a and b values, which can be found by taking the cube root of these, and you plug them into our formula. So the first one is, uh, for sum, is a plus b times a squared minus a times b plus b squared. And you'll notice that the difference formula is very similar, except these two signs are flipped. So a minus b times a squared 
plus a times b plus b squared. So again, again, a dead giveaway is a two-term expression with a plus or minus sign in all perfect cubes. So I like, again, to list out my a and b values here. My a value will be 2x because the cube root of 8x cubed is 2x. My b value is going to be 1 because the cube root, cube root of 1 is 1. And I just plug these two values into my formula for difference of two squares. So we have 2x minus 1 times 4x squared. Now this is the number you need to be really um, careful about. Since the formula calls for a squared, you need to make sure you are squaring your entire a value. A really common mistake would be to write a 2 here. So just make sure if there's a coefficient, you're also squaring that coefficient. And then we do plus a times b, 2x times 1 is just 2x, plus b squared. 1 squared is 1. So this is our um, answer. This one has two factors. And if you've done it correctly and you checked for a GCF at the beginning, this trinomial should never be factorable. You should be done completely. However, if you didn't check for a GCF, you might need to factor more at the end. Okay, the last method we're going to review is called the grouping method. This is a good method to try when you have a polynomial with four terms. So the first thing I'm going to do is actually group pairs of my terms together. So I'm going to try grouping my first two terms like this. And I'll group my second two terms. Um, since this is a negative 3x, I'm going to make sure the negative stays with my 3x. And I'm going to actually write it like this, plus negative 3x plus 12. So uh, within my two individual groups, I'm going to be factoring them separately. I'm looking for a GCF. So within that blue group, this first group, I notice that there's a GCF of x squared. So I'm going to factor that out. And within my red group, um, I notice that there's a GCF of negative 3. I'm going to factor out the negative since it's my lead term for this group. So I'll factor out negative 3. And that gives us x minus 4. Be careful when you're factoring out the negative. So our goal is to end up with um, two terms where part of the factors match. So what you'll notice here is that we have matching x minus 4 uh, factors. So when you see that occur, what you can do is you can take your remaining um, two factors, the ones out front, and you can group those two together. So it becomes x squared minus 3 times x minus 4. And once again, um, you can quickly check your work by multiplying it out. Um, I always say that uh, while you might not be able to get the correct factors, you should never get the wrong factors because they're so easy to double check. Okay, so at this point, I'm going to ask you to pause the video and give these four problems a try. Uh, problem B is definitely a challenge problem, so give your best shot. Um, we'll go over them in just a few seconds, um, and please make sure you read the hint. Okay, let's go over these four problems. So problem A um, took two different, or actually three different types of uh, steps for factoring. First, you have to notice there's a GCF of xy squared leaving you with this, which you can factor using difference of two squares, which um, this last factor you can factor again using difference of two squares. So our final answer should be this in the box. For part B, the challenge problem, this one is tricky. Hopefully you notice the GCF of three. And um, this one actually has a GCF also of x to the negative one half. Um, remember when you're dividing out something with an exponent, you're essentially subtracting it. So if I have 3 halves minus negative 1 half, it becomes 4 halves, which is 2. 1 half minus negative 1 half becomes 1. And negative 1 half minus negative 1 half becomes 0. So the x term disappears. So this one is a little bit tricky, but you can factor out um, exponents that are rational. This remaining trinomial can be factored simply using GCF. 
Okay, part C, um, since it's four terms, we want to try to factor by grouping. This one's a little bit tricky because while the GCF is apparent here, there actually is no GCF here. So I like to write this um, invisible one out front to show what I will be grouping with it because it is technically one times x minus six. So as long as these two factors match, you're good to go for grouping. So two x plus one times x minus six. And the last one, first you have to do um, GCF, which was two x, your remaining binomial is actually a sum of two cubes problems. So uh, using your a and b values, plug those into the formula I gave you. Just watch this term. Remember this term is a squared, so you have to square the three along with the x. All right, that is all for your factoring review. Um, thanks for watching.